hello friends in this video we are continuing our anatomy series uh, this is a third video in this series in this video we are going to talk about anatomy of uterus uh, on the left side I have my personal notes when I was doing my PG and on the right side I have some explanatory figures and uh, at the end of this video I will explain everything this thing in on the 3d models okay so let's talk about uterus uterus is a pyriform shape organ that is 50 to 70 gram up to 80 gram 15 to 70 gram happens in case of nulliparous woman in case of multiparous woman it goes to 80 grams but I want you to understand that the pregnant uterus the weight is 1 kg so can you see the change from 50 grams to 1 kg this is a drastic change and that's why the uterus is the organ of reproduction because only uterus can change to this uh, uh, to this limit only okay so what should be the length of uterus normal length it is a uh, 6 to 8 centimeter in case of nor, uh, nullipara and 9 centimeter in case of multipara this is the this is the length of the uterus when we are talking about okay now what is the capacity of non pregnant uterus 10 ml and can you guess what is the capacity of pregnant woman 5 liter that means 5000 ml so now you can imagine that how the uterus is capable of from 10 ml cavity to 5000 ml cavity this much uterus changes itself during pregnancy now the normal measurements of the uterus uh, vary from patient to patient and size vary from patient to patient but still we have some rudimentary sizes like 3.25 uh, into 2.5 into 1.5 inches so when we talk about the length here the length the uh, uh, the width and the thickness okay so this is how we do this thing now let's go ahead uh, the uterus is divided into three basic parts actually it is only divided into two parts like the body and cervix but for explanatory purpose we also include isthmus also so how we divide uh, this part now let's see this is the body of the uterus this is the body of the uterus this part is called isthmus and this lower part is the cervix everybody knows this thing so let's go forward the wall of the uterus is made of three distinct layers so here are the three distinct layers the first one is a serosa the serosa is nothing but the visceral peritoneum that that is very very adherent to the uterus and how this visceral peritoneum uh, is adherent I can see you in this uh, particular figure this is the uterus this is the bladder this is the uterus and this is a rectum and this red lining is a peritoneum visceral peritoneum you can see anteriorly it gets a deep also and posteriorly it also get dips and makes pouch on anterior and posterior side posterior pouch is also known as pouch of Douglas okay so uh, the another layer the very important layer is of myometrium both three layers are very important but myometrium has some another level of importance because it's a living ligature if we uh, if we divide the myometrium into three parts then we have a three distinct distinct bundles of layer the outer longitudinal layer the inner circular layer and 
middle interlaking layer you can see here the middle is interlaking layer which uh, which act as a living ligature because when they contract they just obliterate the arteries running into them so it it uh, it prevents the pph at the level uh, at the stage 3 of labor now another very very important layer is endometrium endometrium is a very very functional and unique layer of the uterus which is actually not seen anywhere in the body it changes itself according to the hormones and cyclical changes are there but if we just do the histology of this endometrium we see a lamina propria a surface epithelium and the stroma so the surface epithelium is a ciliated columnar epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium uh, now let's go uh, for the anatomy of uterus if we see the cornus of the utri uterus so we see three distinct structures arising from the cornu from above side there is a fallopian tube from anteriorly a, a, a round ligament also gets origin and posteriorly ovarian ligaments also get origin so you can remember like this RFO so R will be anteriorly O will be posteriorly and F will be upper side fallopian tube okay now now let's talk about the part in details if we see the body of the uterus it is divided into a fundus and body proper the fundus part is this above the level of cornu the, this part is called as a fundus of the uterus from below this part we take it as a body okay now one very important part and many people uh, have confusion regarding the isthmus of the isthmus of the uh, uterus what is actually the isthmus of the uterus uh, for definition we take it as a 0.5 centimeter part between the uterus proper and the cervix this is called isthmus but what actually happens here is the isthmus part is a junction of cervix and uterus cervix and uterus well, the cervix is a part of uterus, but if we talk about pro proper uterus and the cervix, they have total different kind of composition. If we go with the uterus properly, the, the wall of the uterus are mainly made of biometrium and having smooth muscles. But if we go with the cervix, then the amount of smooth muscle just get decreases up to 10% only and the cervix is mainly formed by collagens so this transition part is called isthmus and isthmus is not visible in non-pregnant uterus when the uterus is become pregnant and uh, in the later part of the pregnancy when the labor develops then you can identify the isthmus part of the uh, uterus that is stretchable and at the at the uterus when the uterus part uh, isthmus part of the uterus is stretchable becomes stretching then the then the serosa means the peritoneum above this part gets looser so when we do a cesarean section in a patient we just identify the isthmus by loose fold of peritoneum so this will you will learn when we do a caesarean section lecture now let's more concentrate on the cervix this is my friend one sided cervix i have shown you cervix is the lowermost part of the uterus okay two different terminologies are there histological internal os and and uh, uh, anatomical internal os and external os these are nothing but confusion things we should not just uh, have so much of attention on these things internal os means 
when the cervical canal ends and external os means when the cervical canal starts so this is the external os and this is the internal os and the length of the cervix is it should be 4 cm when it becomes less than 2.5 cm we take is we take it is a, a, a shortened cervix okay as i already told you the cervix is made up of 10% of muscle only or the 90% thing is a collagen elastin and proteoglycans why it is composed like that because it will make very very uh, in, uh, important place in cervical effacement at the time of labor now you can divide the cervix into two parts the supravaginal cervix which is a part above the vagina see this is the vagina my friends so the cervical part above the vagina is a supravaginal uh, supravaginal cervix and below the uh, below the vagina below the vagina vaginal end it is called infravaginal cervix or it is called exocervix also uh, we have a very very important histological learning here now i am going to tell you see you can see here is the vagina this is the this is the exocervix that means infravaginal part and this is endocervix mean supravaginal part so in case of endocervix endocervix the epithelium is tall columnar epithelium just like vagina just like you uterus in the uterus the epithelium is of columnar ciliated epithelium while in case of vagina it, we have a stratified squamous epithelium so the change from stratified squamous epithelium to tall columnar epithelium at the site of change is called transformation zone the transformation zone is nothing but changing of the mucous membrane from stratified squamous epithelium of vagina to tall columnar epithelium of uterus so at this point of time the carcinoma cervix arises in this site okay now now let's talk about fallopian tubes fallopian tubes are also a part of uterus and they are made from a same structure mullerian ducts so uh, their function is changed but they are made from a same original duct that is mullerian duct so the fallopian tube have four parts the fallopian tube connects what from ovary to uterine cavity so it can pass the ovum from ovary to uterine cavity okay and it also also passes sperms from uterine cavity to the tube and why i have already discussed why is tube is the site of fertilization because the tubes are of small diameter and here only the ovum and the sperms get into the close proximity that's why it is a site of fertilization now we have divided the tube into four different parts the first part is the intramural part intramural part is nothing but the part of fallopian tube inside the wall of the uterus this part it is a, a very uh, uh, it is a very uh, uh, no uh, constricted part the uh, only one mm wider the another 1.5 2.5 centimeter part is called isthmus it is a physiological sphincter this is the anatomical sphincter this is a physiological sphincter because this part is also not very wide it's only 2 mm in size wider okay so this was 1 mm this was this is 2 mm and this is 2.5 centimeter long 
Now the ampulla part is the biggest part of 5 cm and it is it's also wider part and that's why it is a most common site for fertilization because it is wider. Now the fourth part is a fimbrial part or infundibulum. It is 1.25 cm long and it has finger like projection to catch the ovum. Okay. Uh, what could be the epithelium of fallopian tube is again I have said you already that uterus and tubes are made up from same Mullerian duct so the epithelium is going to be a same more or less same ciliated columnar epithelium okay and this uh, in this epithelium we got peg cells so peg cells are very important it secretes pyruvate and the pyruvate is very important nutrient for ovum and embryo okay so that's why this side becomes very important now the, the tube have peristaltic movement so that the ovum and the embryo can just move to the uterus now let's talk about ovaries we are only talking about anatomies of the ovary the ovary's normal volume of the ovary is 9 to 8 9.8 i mean 9 ml okay in case of menstruating woman reproductive life of a woman we have almost around 9 ml of mean ovarian volume it is a mean ovarian volume Premenstrual and postmenstrual ovarian volume decreases because the ovarian volume depends on the hormonal stimulation from the pituitary. That's why it gets changed. My friends, you should know this thing that the ovary is a retroperitoneal structure. It is situated in the ovarian fossa. Ovarian fossa is a very important anatomical site. Okay. And ovary is suspended by ovarian ligament and infundibulo pelvic ligament. Okay, and uh, it also it also has a mesentery that is called meso ovarium on the inferior side of ovary here. Okay, so what are the relations of the ovary? It's very important. In anteriorly, it have it did a ex, uh, external iliac vessel. Posteriorly, it have internal iliac vessels, and the floor of this ovarian fossa has an obturator now. So, uh, by far, ovary is a important uh, important structure of female. Now, let's go on the models of uh, so that we can learn it very practically 